This story will cover from then to now and next, all about change, how to turn losers into winners. Table Mountain, Cape Town, South Africa. Tourists come here from all over the world and some are about to start on a wildlife safari with a difference, which will turn into a nightmare, looking for lions far from here and reached in an unusual way. to the Shongalolo Express. Not your typical safari minibus, but a train with small rooms. And at the moment, right by the sea, more passengers arrive and soon they'll be heading inland, not thinking their dream of a lifetime will become a nightmare in their pursuit of not only giraffes and other big game, but especially the big one, lions. And they're heading to Namibia to find one on a train wildlife safari. There's a lot of this, and there's a lot of Namibia, over four times the size of the UK. Like looking for a proverbial lion, not a needle, in a haystack. Life seems barren, and basic. Could they be lion food? And are the local people at risk? Do they need to pray for their safety? Or as it turns out, for the tourists on this train? There are not many railway crossings around here. the safari part. Metal railway wheels are swapped for rubber tyres on what you'd expect from 16 proper safari vehicles. It's a great idea. Bring your own, go off on a trip and return to the comfort of your cabin and move on again. At least that's the idea anyway. These two will find out on honeymoon from the Netherlands, a trip to be remembered, certainly. Most of the passengers are from Germany, known for their expectancy of perfection, or they might ask for their money back. There's even a book about how to achieve that, which they may need soon. The guides take them to Fish River Canyon, Africa's answer to the Grand Canyon in the US. Over thousands of years, the Fish River has carved out this massive chasm in a rocky, barren plain. It's not exactly lion country, but it's soon in the safari, and they're still really keen to see one, or more even. But this safari is about to change drastically. Not only is it raining more water for the Fish River, but here's the really bad news. Well, their train is still there, but there are two trains. Not exactly a mating moment.
It seems our train was parked in a siding and another one simply crashed into it. Yes, Boris. They'll definitely try to get their money back this time. And they haven't even seen that lion. The train repairs were later estimated at some $15 million. It's been raining and it's getting dark when predators prowl. Certainly a honeymoon to remember for our Dutch couple, Joki and Nano. But the tour company was terrific. Despite the remote location and some elderly and shocked passengers, and with no injuries, the company organized a rescue fleet. It was the end of the train safari, but it was to continue by road. The new Dutch wife is delighted to meet a particularly friendly warthog, who's looking for a selfie, apparently. Now back to business, safari business. A prehistoric forest in a prehistoric landscape. Quiver trees. It is said named after their use by the local sand hunters of its hollowed out branches as quivers for their arrows. Today, a photographer's target. Sort of desert textures, bark, lizard, rock. An ancient scene, very typical of Namibia. Pretty impressive camouflage. But this tourist has found an easier target, a blue version. Everyone can be a wildlife camera person these days. Even mobile phones can record good quality and there are now millions of them all around the world. A tourist wouldn't think of travelling without a camera. When he gets back to the Netherlands after their honeymoon, will he tell his admirers how they got those great pictures of two cheetahs resting in the shade. Cheating, perhaps. Big cats have many more fans than lizards, and top of the pops is the big cat, the lion. Time is running out on this safari. In the meantime, the Shongololo non-train express is enjoying their symbol, giraffes and antelopes. It now seems giraffes all over Africa are declining. It seems extraordinary not to know more about them. Such a famous great creature. And far down below, a tortoise virtually runs on his safari. To 
meet Jockey and Nano. Danger area. But what's this, or rather these? Quite a lot of ostriches. Also dangerous sometimes. An ostrich farm. The meat is much favoured, with low fat. The feathers world famous and the huge eggs can make a lot of omelettes. Perhaps not a boiled egg though. Though they can't fly, they use their wings in display and they can run and turn on very strong legs armed with powerful claws. A kick from an ostrich can cause a lot of damage even to a lion which may sometimes attack, including one sitting on eggs on the ground, a sitting duck or rather ostrich, you could say. Oh, memories. These engines, like the crashed ill-fated two, produce three and a half thousand horsepower each. This is a freight train. Namibia's mineral resources are vast and the country is underexplored. After mining, agriculture and fisheries, tourism is the fourth most important sector. Thousands are employed in the business, which manages conservation across some 12% of Namibia. So the value of a weaver bird colony, this one so heavy that it's broken the tree, and other wildlife may come up against industrial expansion later. But for now, Namibia seems to have plenty of space and can conserve its resources sustainably. That magic word. In the past, there were hundreds of so-called hunting farms, now very controversial, as it turned out with Cecil the lion, killed for sport and money in Zimbabwe in 2015. We'll look at that later, and local lions, we hope, as the group move on to a wetter habitat. Any wildlife safari in Africa, from Angola to Zanzibar, includes certain key ingredients. Dry, dusty roads, followed by a pool. Very early starts, when it's cool and the animals are out and about. The best way to find them is with a local guide, in this case a bushman, who mixes traditional with modern. Then they're off on a foot safari, on what started as a train safari back in Cape Town. And all the way, lions have been on their minds. They see how a buried ostrich egg can hold water, crucial in this red hot desert. Okay, normalerweise hat er da zum Meter bis Meter 50 eingegraben. Dadurch, äh, dass die Tiere ja. nicht. Die Tiere nicht ans Wasser. Ja. Ja. Die riechen ja das Wasser. Das so wäre es. Der Enter ist ein Pott. Ja. Okay, that got different words, the ostrich egg. No. One way is it for keeping water, on the other side. The guide leads them to his village, more of a show community really. Some would criticise this artificial kind of reality, but without it traditions would die out, and at least it provides some income for the original owners of this land. In terms of money and lifestyle, this is where two cultures meet briefly. That's until the next safari comes by. These days water comes in plastic bottles, Ostrich eggs replaced. So does milk, also a replacement. 
So. Wollt ihr dann auch in diese Ketten mit einarbeiten? Das mit diesem Gemäldebaum, das ist der hier. Der hat so Früchte. Die haben hier mit eingearbeitet. Und dann ist hier ein spezielles Holz, was die hier in der Umgebung finden. Und da arbeiten die halt auch mit dann in die Ketten. This is a show with benefits, but you may wonder what their diet will become when they grow up. McDonald's anyone? From the show home and the quick guided tour, it's back by vehicle to a very different world. The natural world, what they've come all this way to see. Potentially lion prey, these oryx are well armed. Hopefully the fence will do its job. Because tents won't, should a wild animal get in. But that's the appeal of a wildlife safari, being out there amongst the wildlife. But no one mentioned the dawn chorus all day. You might think a prowling lion a problem, but try an oryx. It's best to stay inside and enjoy the pool in this hot and most ancient desert country. Certainly don't do this outside. Those spear-like horns point backwards, right? He's lucky to get away with it, not very clever. This is the early start part. When it's calm and the light's great, Jockey and Nano visit the famous sand dunes of the Namib. Once a lake was here, but the trees have long since died, and the only moisture comes from mists that sweep in from the ocean. Beetles stand on the dune ridges and collect water on their legs. Right now, Nano is collecting sand on hers. A very special place with some very specialized nature, surviving in what would appear to be a disaster area. It's humans that need or create all the help they can get. Welcome to Welwitchia mirabilis, a living fossil plant. In effect, it's a tree turned dwarf by the rigors of the desert, producing only two leaves throughout its long lifetime. These grow to three meters, that's 10 feet long. And the one who found it, the one said it must be banked, and the other one said it must be from the, from the air. Now, the root system of the Welwitchia is very really close to the surface. Now when two of the separate male and female flowers are produced, and one specimen is thought to be at least 2,000 years old. And at last they found what they've really been looking for. A lion.
You wouldn't have thought such a powerful beast as a lion could be in trouble. But they are because they're difficult to live with and human population pressure increases all the time. They're okay in Namibia, enough room at least for now. They help to maintain healthy prey species by killing off weak individuals. But this doesn't apply the other way round. Some so-called big game hunters pay to kill prime male lions. As is the now famous case of Cecil in Zimbabwe in 2015. This incident shooting a semi-wild, well-loved individual was described as the biggest wildlife story there has ever been. So says Professor David MacDonald of Oxford University. It went viral in a way that was unprecedented, he says. American dentist Walter Palmer was himself hounded and hunted by the public. But the good news was that over $1 million was donated to help lions and they need it. They're losing ground and many populations are declining across Africa. Some say the money paid by clients shooting big game can benefit the local people, but that's if it reaches them. Any moment now, those were the days. Well, there he is. But with those trees in the way, too difficult to hit. Now quick, to cover, before he spots the... So far, so good. The lion hasn't seen them. Now the lion's moving out into the open. This is the chance the game ranger's been waiting for. But quick, the lion has seen him. Sounded like a hit, but only the next few seconds will tell. Is it dead or only shamming? No, this time the lion's down for good. But as the game ranger knows, the African native likes to see things for himself rather than blindly accept what he is told. Now they can see with their own eyes that thanks to the Buana game ranger, the lion that menaced their cattle will trouble them no more. For the warriors too, it means their reputations have been saved. To the game ranger and his scouts, this is simply the end of another episode in the day's work. Typical of the many problems they have to deal with in the course of their duty. One has to remember lions can be very dangerous, even in a game park on a well-organized safari. They're wild animals and we are in their territory. Now, this seems a bit risky. Try not to sneeze. And from her point of view, why isn't that supper up there? But everyone survived the safari, even the train crash, which the tourism company rescued and put back on the road. More and more eco-tourists will visit Namibia for its fantastic wilderness and friendly people. Jumbos of the skies will bring them to some of the most remarkable natural wonders. Ancient plants. On their honeymoon, perhaps. And the stars of the show, whose future is in doubt.
but the now infamous case of the lion Cecil, shot by an American dentist, has made a martyr of that particular lion. So they got their own lions, and the train safari ends on a plane heading for home.